Hello, thank you for joining us for our service for Gospel Light Baptist Church for our Wednesday evening service. And as many of you probably already know here in Uganda, our lockdown here has been extended for two weeks. But they have lifted some of the restrictions and some businesses are able to open right now. But there's still challenges and people getting to work because of uh, transportation. Public and private transportation are still not allowed. But they've given some other measures that people can follow to get to work. And it's supposed to be a help to some people, but there are still many out of work, so we need to be praying for one another still uh, during this time. Um, and also, even those businesses that are open are facing some challenges as they may not be able to get parts that they need for their company um, to operate, or they may have a limited number of customers now. And so, still a lot of challenges that are being faced, but uh, we need to continue to pray for God's blessing during this time. And for especially those who are sick, that uh, they'll recover from this disease very quickly and that by God's grace this lockdown can be lifted very soon. And so uh, let us be praying for one another and also for God's provision during this time. Now this evening I want to look again about the matter of prayer and I'm going to be talking some about how to pray for your home but in learning how to pray for your home we have to make sure that we are praying effectively as well. Um, about a week or so ago we preached on effective prayer but we want to look at some more details about this matter of prayer and about some things, especially as we're on lockdown right now and spending a lot more time at home with family, um, about how to pray effectively, especially for one another. And here in 1 Peter chapter 3, turn in your Bible there to 1 Peter chapter 3, we'll be reading verses 7 through 12. I'll be looking at these verses tonight about prayer. And so 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning of verse 7. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So this implies your prayers can be hindered based upon the relationship between the husband and the wife here. Also look in verse 8. Finally be you all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brother, and be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing. But contrawise, blessing, knowing that uh, you are thereunto called, that you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good, let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So we're going to learn some things about prayer here tonight and about how to pray effectively also a bit more and also we'll be talking about praying for one another, praying for the family. And so let us look at some principles here about prayer. First of all, prayer has specific purposes. There are specific purposes when it comes to prayer and we need to understand this. And it talks about uh, that our prayers be not hindered. Now, prayer gives us access to God. That's one thing, thing about prayer and about our Lord. We don't have some God who's far off. We have a God that we can pray to, that we can talk to. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so what an honor it is to be able to come before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, directly to God in this matter of prayer. This is not just for priests or for pastors, but for every born-again believer, we have direct access to God. And so this is a wonderful thing about prayer. It gives us access to God. And this is important because God is the founder of the home. Who better to go to for help, for advice, than to the one who started, who instituted the home. And so we have direct access to Him. And we need to make sure that we have that proper relationship to the Lord. Now to have that, you have to be saved. If you want direct access to God, you must trust Him as your personal Savior to call upon the name of the Lord. Now prayer also gives us access to the peace of God. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Here it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So during this lockdown, many people are struggling, not just financially, but also emotionally and spiritually. 
and in their interpersonal relationships with other family members. Um, even some are struggling with their relationships through social media. Uh, some people are struggling as they're trying to communicate to people or feel like no one's listening to them, whatever it might be. Now some may, might, some may feel that you're going a little bit crazy being locked up at home. There's struggles that you're facing and you might have some challenges um, that you feel that you're being overwhelmed. Now the first person we should go to is to the Lord. He understands what we're going through. He understands everything that you're feeling today. And He's there for us. He's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Others may have um, not been so kind. Maybe. Uh, maybe others are not listening to you. Maybe you feel like others don't care for you. But God loves you. God cares for you. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. You might be saying, there's nobody here that wants to listen to me. Well, God is there. God is here with you, and He's willing to listen. He wants you to call upon Him. And so no matter what you're going through, God wants you to talk to Him about. It. Now, this helps us in several different ways. It helps us out psychologically with our mind and emotionally with our feelings. Um, sometimes when you don't talk, you feel like you're almost about to explode, some people say. And so when you're able to talk to someone, to verbalize that, to put into words... And able to discuss those things, it many times gives you a sense of relief or it relieves that pressure, that, that stress that is there. And so you can go to God and pray to Him. You can put that into words and talk to Him just like you talk to anyone else. Because God wants you to pray to Him in that way, um, to talk to Him. It also helps us spiritually as we're in obedience to God's Word. As now we're starting to communicate Him, to trust in Him, to share with Him our needs, our challenges that we're facing. And so this will also draw us closer to the Lord. So prayer can help us psychologically, can help us emotionally, spiritually, in different ways. And so it's important to learn to go to God in prayer. It gives us that peace of mind, that peace of heart. Also prayer gives us the provision of God. Look in James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 1. James chapter 4, and verse 1. Now, you know, prayer is asking. And the Bible says, ye have not, but why? Because ye ask not. And that's what we see here. We'll read James chapter 4, but let's read the first three verses. Not just that one verse, but let us begin here in verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Can they not even hence of your lust that war in your members? Many times the challenges we face at home is because I want to have my way. It's my way or no way. And so many times challenges come with the home. And that's with the children, with the husband, with the wife. We can all face those challenges. But look here, in verse 2, You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, you fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. And so we need to learn to go to God in prayer. You ask and receive not because you ask and miss that you may consume it upon your lust. We need to make sure we have the right motivation in our prayer. Now also, um, we struggle many times because we put our own needs and desires before that of our spouse or even before our own children. Instead of just praying for our own needs and desires, pray for one another. Put your, put your, put your family before yourself. Uh, prayer draws us close to God so He can also prove His sufficiency for every need. God can provide. You know, look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 8. They're the first book of the New Testament. Now God knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. It's, like, it, it's not that God is caught by surprise. There's nothing that surprises God. God knows all things. And so here it says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 8, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask Him. God knows what you need. And so if you're asking for all these other things, well, He may not answer those requests. You might be asking the miss. He knows what you need. Now we can look at this verse in different ways. This is one of them here. But also we can go to Him and He can help to provide. God allows needs to come into our life so that we will draw closer to Him. He does this sometimes in our life. In Psalms chapter 50 and verse 15. Psalms chapter 50 back in the Old Testament. The book of Psalms chapter 50 and verse 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble. Now we're in those days right now I think. There's many challenges that we're facing. 
As we said, financially, emotionally, many different ways, spiritually, there's challenges many are facing today. Psalms chapter 50, verse 15, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee. That's a wonderful thing to hear, isn't it? I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. What happens in times of trouble? We start to look up. We get so busy in our everyday life, like before this pandemic came, and sometimes we get our eyes off of God, but when trouble comes, that's when we start looking up. That's when we start praying as we should again. But if we're not careful, as we're in this lockdown, as we're looking to our family and to those close to us, um, we can have challenges at home. So we need to keep our eyes on God and keep looking to Him and praying to Him for His guidance, for His help during this time, especially in our time at home. Not to be frustrated, not to be angry, but to be able to enjoy this time with our family. So prayer has specific purposes. There's others we can mention. We'll stop here for that one. We'll look at the second point here now. Prayer follows specific principles. Now, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Turn back there to our text. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, be you all of one mind, having compassion one of another, Love us, brother, be pitiful, be courteous. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7, we saw this verse earlier, about what the Bible said we must do so that our prayers be not hindered. So our prayers can be hindered if you don't follow certain principles or guidelines that are there. And so prayer follows specific principles that are here, and we need to follow those principles. Let's look at some more of these guidelines we might call principles here that we need to follow in this matter of prayer. Now, each of these are important to remember as we pray, especially for our home. Because as we're in this lockdown, as we're going to God in prayer, we don't want these prayers to be hindered, especially as we're praying for one another for health and for safety, for uh, security, for finances and these things. Now, first of all, pray about everything. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray without ceasing. We should have that continual attitude of prayer and that in everything, we go to God in prayer. Many times we just go to God and we have something we need or we want or we have some problem. Sometimes we have those big decisions, but even the small decisions of life, we ought to go to God in prayer. Pray about everything. That's what we're talking about here. Pray without ceasing. Develop that daily habit of communicating with God. Pray for your spouse and for your children every day. Not just during the time of a pandemic, but even after this time to continue to pray for one another. Ask God to bless them every day. Someone once said, it's hard to stay mad at someone when you're praying for God's daily blessings upon their life. I had a pastor friend of mine talk about that. He said, sometimes, you know, even as pastors, we get upset with people. And he said, one of the things that he did in his life, he just said when he was upset with someone, he specifically called their name in prayer every day and asked God to bless them. He said, the first day when we first start doing that, he said, you'll be praying, say, Lord, bless brother, um, uh, Lord, um, bless brother so-and-so, you know, bless brother whoever. I'm not going to name names, it might be the name of someone watching, there's no one in particular we're talking about. But he said that first day you pray for that person, it's hard to say God bless and then say their name. And he said the second day is still be a little bit harder. But he said, you know, as you go on, by the time you go three or four or five days before the end of a week even, he said, man, you're saying, Lord, please bless Brother John or Susie or whoever it is, Sister Susie, whatever. And please help them and be with them. And then your heart is now in that as well. And so, you know, when you're praying for one another and asking God to bless one another, yeah, we still get upset with each other sometimes. But you're not going to stay that way if you're praying for God's blessings. Don't just pray and say, God, change them. Pray and ask God to bless them and for God to work in them and in you to help you both to be the people that you need to be. And so sometimes this will help. And sometimes you just focus on asking God to change others, where sometimes we might even be the ones who need to change. And so we need to make sure that we're praying this way in our life and to pray about everything. Also pray specifically. Don't just say, God bless everybody. Now you can have that as part of your prayer. You might be praying, say, Lord, help everyone to get saved, for example. But you can have people that you pray for by name also. Uh, there should be people that you specifically name when you want to see people saved. Um, also, in talking about the home, praying specifically for your home. 
about God meeting the needs, about God helping you um, as far as working together and as far as getting along together and whatever it might be. You can pray specifically for these things. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7, turn back to the first book of the New Testament here, the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7. Um, here's a very good verse here. It says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Some people just repeat what they refer to as the Lord's Prayer. I mean, I've been in different places, and I'll be there, and some other pastors will be there from different religions. Uh, maybe someone has been sick in the hospital, and different family members, someone that is there from our church, another family member is from another church, another family member is from another church. So each of these family members call their pastors, and so I'll come to be there for them, and I will pray for them. And there's been times that I'll pray and I'll say, Lord, help their father to, to, uh, to recover from the sickness. Or, Lord, help them with this situation. I'll name it specifically. And you get some other pastor there. And he starts praying, Our Father, which art in heaven. How the... And he's not praying for the Father at all. He's not praying for the needs at all that are there. He is reciting the Lord's Prayer, what we refer to as Lord's Prayer, in which God is teaching us things to pray for. But it was not saying to repeat that prayer every time. And so we need to learn how to pray specifically for the needs that are there that we have. And the Bible says don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do. They are not to be doing this. You might say, oh, this is a pastor. Well, if he's using vain repetitions, it's against the word of God. It doesn't matter who it might be. But, you know, some people want to get out a prayer book or some other thing. But, you know, that's not how we're supposed to be. I told somebody, can you imagine if at home... You know, the husband comes home and the wife says, how are you? And he pulls out a book and he says, um, uh, I am fine. And she says, how was your day? It was good. And everything she asks him, he, he gets out some book and he, now for the Bible, and, you know, talking to God, that's not so bad. But, and just, you know, just reading off something that was prepared by someone else. When my wife talks to me, she's not wanting to know how someone else is doing or what someone else thinks. She wants to talk to me. She wants to hear from me. And when we're talking to God, He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear what you have to say. He wants to hear about your struggles. He wants to know everything about you because He loves you and He cares for you. So we need to learn to pray specifically, specifically about things for our home and for our own life. Pray and ask God to bless your loved ones and name them to God. Give them and uh, mention their names in prayer. Pray and ask God to help your spouse to understand maybe what you're going through or to give you the words to speak to them. Pray and ask for God's grace as you pass through some difficulty, but pray specifically for the needs, for the requests, for the desires that you have. Also pray directly to God. Now this is also important because today in religion, people use vain repetitions that also they pray to idols. And what does call them what they are? Those are idols that many people pray to in the name of religion. Look in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. We read this verse earlier tonight, but let's read it here again. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the priest. Now it doesn't say that, does it? It doesn't say to the pastor, it doesn't say to someone else. It says unto the throne of grace, talk about come directly to God that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now I'll be turning also over to the book of Exodus chapter 20. The book of Exodus. You see, you don't need to pray to a priest or to a pastor or to a picture of Jesus or Mary on the wall. You don't need to be holding some type of um, medallion or something or some saint or praying to or through some saint or praying to some statue or kissing the toe of some statue. That's even against the word of God. That is un. Biblical. Look in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4 there in the Old Testament. Look here. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Look also in verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So this is unbiblical. 
praying to statues, to idols, to these things. You can call them what you want, but that's what God calls them. You will not get your prayers answered by being disobedient to God. That's not the best way to try it anyway. I mean, God can still be gracious to us, but normally that's going to fall on deaf ears as we say. Realize that you have direct access to God. Why go to someone else when you can go directly to God? You have direct access to the Father, to that throne of grace. You don't need to go to any other person. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Not the man, the priest, or the pope, or the pastor, or some other thing, but the Lord Jesus Christ. You have direct access to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So prayer has specific purposes. Prayer follows specific principles. And the last thing here tonight, prayer follows specific practices. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. Uh, we read these verses, or through 12 even, we read these verses earlier. Let me just point out a few parts of these verses here. In verse 7 it says, um, giving honor unto the wife. In verse 8 it said, finally be all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Now it says be pitiful there. It's not saying, you know, if you love me, you do this and try to seek pity, but showing compassion towards one another. That's how you should be towards others, not you trying to get others to be that way towards you necessarily. Um, we see also not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing in verse 9. In other words, don't do, well, I have to get even with them. I have to get them back. Do you know what she did to me? Do you know what he said to me? That's that railing for railing. Um, you know, evil in your words or evil in action, but loving and forgiving one another. Verse 10, for he that will love life and seek good days, let him, look here, refrain his tongue from evil. One of the greatest enemies of the home is right here, the tongue. And how we say things and what we say and, as I said, how we say it. And that's something we have to learn as well. And um, it talks about the lips, they speak no guile, no deceit. Talk about being honest. Don't be deceitful in the home. Verse 11, let him excuse or hate evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it or follow after it. Verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Look at this next part. And his ears are open unto their what? Unto their prayers. So there are certain ways you need to be if you want to have that effect of prayer life. If you want to see God bless you in your home, as you're praying for the blessings of God, if you want that to come to pass, there are certain practices or certain behaviors or character traits, you might say, that you need in your own life. The, his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Now, you can know all there is to know about prayer. You can follow all the principles about prayer, and there's even more than what I mentioned here tonight. But if you're not living that Christian life, then your prayers can be hindered. Now again, God can still be merciful and answer our prayers if He so desires. But you know, in James chapter 5, verses 16, James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. Then it says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I tell you, if you are doing what's right, it says that those prayers, that God hears those prayers. And you can see God do great mighty things, even above and beyond what you might expect, even not just at work, but even at home, in your home life, and having a good home life, having a home that you enjoy coming to, having a home that when you're on lockdown even, that you um, are not going to go crazy, you're not going to be you know, wanting to fight each other, or yelling and screaming all the time, or anything like that, but a home that you have the blessings of God upon it, a home that you can enjoy. Yes, that doesn't mean there will never be challenges. But I tell you, the home is so much better when Christ is at the center of that home. And so we see these things here. And look in Psalms chapter 37, our last verse here tonight, Psalms chapter 37. Now, if you want to have that happy home life, then you need to go to God in prayer. You need to seek His will, His way in your life and in your home. You need to follow His word. To follow those principles that we've talked about. To delight yourself in the Lord. Many times we delight ourselves in things, but we need to delight ourselves in the Lord. 
Those things should be taken away. Many people have lost many things, even businesses and other things. But you know, the joy of the Lord is something that no one can take away from you. You can always delight yourself in the Lord. Psalm chapter 37, Psalms, Psalms chapter 37 verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. What is it that you desire today? Oh, some people might think about money, about all these things. But I desire to have a home that's well-pleasing to God. I desire to live a life that is well-pleasing to God. Um, what about you tonight? Is that your desire also? Um, you can have a good home life, even during this time of this lockdown. You can have the blessings of God upon your life. You can have a good time in your home to enjoy the fellowship of your family, especially as you go to God in prayer and ask Him to help you in these different things. If you're not saved today, then you need to trust Christ as your Savior. And if you never trust Him as your Savior, please contact us. We'd love to share with you how you can trust Christ today. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't need us to be there. You don't need to be in the church right now where you are. You can recognize your need to be saved. You can turn from everything and everyone and turn to Jesus Christ and Him alone and call upon Him for salvation. If you'd like to do that, or if you'd like to send in some prayer requests, or if you have some more questions about prayer of the home, please send us a text to our church phone at plus 256-772-537-649. Or you can also send an email um, at gospellightkampala at yahoo.com. We love you and we're praying for you. And let us go and close this time now in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, I thank you for the home and for how you designed the home, Lord. And it's such a wonderful thing when we um, do um, follow your word as far as the home is supposed to be. As we put those principles in place for the husband and for the wife and for the children. As we make you the head of the home as we come to you in prayer to seek your wisdom, to seek your will in every matter and every decision that we make. Lord, I pray that you'll bless our homes today. Draw us closer to you. Help us to come to you in prayer as we walk to you, Lord, especially in resolving issues in the home and in relationships and other matters that we'll pray for one another as we should as well. Lord, we ask you to bless in all these things. We pray that these lockdowns will end soon, that people recover quickly from this virus, and that our people can get back to work, Lord, so they can get the money they need for food and for other necessities. We ask you to bless in all these things. We thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen.